hello that time and welcome back to my channel so first of all let me start by saying thank you thank you to every single one of y'all that has subscribed to my channel have hit liked commented y'all have shown so much love to this platform and can I, listen i'm gonna get into the topic at hand but i just wanted to say i truly truly appreciate y'all to provide me with a safe space to number one talk about god but number two talk about real topics that means a lot to me. I love being a beauty influencer. And this is just a confession. I love hair. I love makeup. I love clothes. I love talking about weight loss, health, all of that. But at the end of the day, with everything that I've gone through over the last few years, some things become a little bit superficial. And while I do enjoy those things, I like to talk about life so much more and this is actually becoming my favorite social media platform even though this is only video number three for me on this channel so for showing me so much love and acceptance and being able to do life with me and talk about the joy of the Lord and stuff like that thank y'all so much and let's get into this video so for this video I do want to put a trigger warning this video because I want to talk about how God used people to bring me out of the darkness that I was in I'm going to talk a little bit about the darkness that I recently experienced with my divorce. And of course, like I said previously, this is not a divorce recovery channel. This is not a breakup recovery channel. We're just talking about life and that just so happened to be a part of my life. In this video, I will be talking about a moment that God brought me out of that involved um, thoughts of not wanting to be here anymore. And so if that is something that bothers you to hear about it, I'm going to ask you to lovingly show yourself some grace and get on up out of here because I don't want to trigger you to, you know, have a bad day. So with that being said, y'all, let's talk about how God uses people as his agents on earth to help you with what you're going through and how they literally saved my life. So last video, I talked to y'all about how I was going through it real, real bad after my divorce. And it wasn't necessarily the breakup in general, which of course, yeah, I mean, of course it sucks, but it was more so my complete lack of faith in God. For all of my life, all I've known is church, reading the word, fasting, praying, witnessing, all of those things that come with a traditional minister of the gospel, that's all I've known. And for life to put me in a situation where I was in the darkest place of my life and I felt separated from God, that that made what I was going through 10 times worse. And even on a different level, what made things feel bad for me is for me, okay? Now I know everybody got their own views. For me, marriage is very spiritual. And I felt like by being married, that provided me with a covering in this world. It provided me with a level of protection. And once that was removed from my life, it left me feeling really vulnerable, really exposed and really alone in this world. So I was feeling separated from God. I was feeling separated from what I thought was a divine connection for me. I ended up isolating myself as well because I started feeling like all I was doing was crying and I was becoming a negative person. Like trauma was really, really changing me. So I started feeling like I was a burden to people around me. So I wouldn't talk to people. So I was isolated from a lot of my friends. I ended up in a place where I felt so super alone. And that made the life experience that I was going through even worse. And so, as I said in the previous video, um, fasting is really what brought about a light in my life and brought me so much peace. But the thing God put on my heart to talk about today is the whole reason I started fasting was because of community. I started fasting because my friend who knew who I really was in the spirit and in the natural, she saw me becoming somebody that I was not. And God used her to tell me how to get on the right path. And so, like I said, trauma changed me it, it isolated me it made me feel alone and i'll put a link in the description box about this study of people that was going through wartime trauma and how a certain percentage of them developed personality disorders based off those catastrophic events they never had a disorder before that but life shook them to their core and they became a different person and that is what i was going through and so god used people to bring me out and when i say community i'm referring to people that love you enough to fight for you in the natural and the spirit when you don't have the strength to fight for yourself. So 
I had a girlfriend. I would say her name, but I didn't ask, so I'm going to just keep it to myself. Um, but I had a really good friend that when I was who I naturally am, she and I would fast together. And when I became a totally different person, what I mean by different person is I've never cussed so much in my life. I never screamed so much in my life. I never drank so much in my life. I started having communications with men that were not like me. I had become a different person because trauma shook me to my core. I was unsure of who I was, who I was supposed to be, and I wanted the pain to stop. So I was using other things to self-medicate, okay? And my friend is the one who got me to fast, and that's what brought me out. But before I got to the place where God completely delivered me from the darkness, things got so bad to me that there was a time where I did not know if I wanted to still be here. And that is how the enemy works. The enemy will completely isolate you so that he can lie to you and sow those seeds into your spirit to get you to act on them. I know in my normal self, I want to be here on earth. If for no other reason, I don't want to leave my child. And so one particular day, I was going through something really, really difficult. And a thought popped in my head. And the thought said, Life ain't gonna never get no better for you. You might as well quit. And I was like, wait a minute, where'd that come from? And because, and, and the thing is, even though I was in a dark place, there was still a glimmer of light in me. And that light that God still had within me, that little hole he had left, was enough for me to be able to still identify the enemy and his devices. And I know that when the enemy is trying to plant seeds in your mind, he doesn't do it in third person. He makes it seem as if the thought originated within you. But I knew that thought, I was like, that's not like me. Like I, I might be down bad, but I ain't, I ain't never wanted to check out where they come from. So I shook it off. Then another day, I had a really, really bad day. I was crying and it got bad. And the thought came back. Life will never improve for you. You might as well quit. And in that day, because I was already really, really vulnerable and emotional, I knew that if I didn't do something in the moment, that thought, that seed would grow and could possibly become action. And in that moment, I did not have the strength to pray for myself. I did not have the strength to fast. I did not have the strength to rebuke the enemy and he'll flee from me. I didn't have the strength for none of that. But what I did have the strength to do and the knowledge to do was to pick up the phone. And the person that I called was the person that I know for sure, come hell or high water, she going to fight for me in the natural and the spirit. And that is my mother. I called her crying and I said, Mama, I don't know what's going on, but these thoughts keep coming to me telling me that I should quit life. And I know I scared her and I, I knew that I didn't want to be a burden and I didn't want to alarm her, but I knew I don't have the strength to fight this. And if somebody don't fight for me, I'm going to check out of here. So I said, mama, I need you to pray. And instantly, cause she was out of town for work. And that's why I, I didn't want to call her because I know as a mother, if my son called me and say he having thoughts that he don't want to be here, Ain't nothing going to stop me from getting to him. But she wasn't even in the state. So I know that was a red flag for her. But I knew I needed her. And so I called her and she started praying. And when I say this lady prayed heaven down. And that's the one thing I will say. I give honor to my mama. Because from a little girl she had us fasting and praying and developing relationship with guys now of course you train up a child in the way they should go of course they might go do something else but the roots are there and so the person i am today is because on saturday mornings my mama had me fasting and praying and so that particular day she prayed heaven down to the point where i literally felt something it felt like uh, something lifted up off of my body and i felt better instantly and as crazy as it sounds it's just like I came back to myself because of how much she prayed, but she didn't stop there. She continued to call my phone just to make sure I was okay. And that is what community does. And sometimes it's not just my mother. Like I said, it was my friend that got me to fast. It was my mama that prayed for me the day where I wasn't sure if I wanted to continue to be here. But it was also one of my best friends. She knew I was going through a dark period and she just wanted to lay eyes on me. So she flew in town. Community is why I'm here today community gave me the strength to fight until I got the strength to fight for myself. And the one thing that God placed on my heart is that the enemy will use is isolation. He will lie to you and make you feel like you're a burden. He will lie to you and make you feel like nobody loves you. He will lie to you and make you feel shame. He will do whatever it is to get you by yourself 
so he can tempt you with negative thoughts and lies and manipulation so that he can destroy you. But just like with all things, the devil is a lie. So the reason I wanted to make this video was because in my prayer time, God told me there's so many people who are suffering right now. And the biggest reason that they're suffering is because they feel like they are alone. Maybe they don't feel like they're alone in people because you can be in a room full of people and still feel like you're alone. But so many people are suffering because they feel like they are by themselves. Like they're the only one that's going through what they're going through. Like if they're struggling with an addiction, they feel like they're all alone in that. Or the enemy will use shame in that to keep you quiet. There are people that go through abuse situations and they will feel shame and they'll keep quiet or they'll feel the need to protect what's going on and they'll keep quiet. But the enemy will use whatever he can to get you to close your mouth, to suffer by yourself. And just like with everything, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So I wanted to use this video to tell you and remind you, number one, as long as God sits on the throne, you are not alone. And I don't care what the enemy says. You are not out here by yourself. Yeah, life might be different for you. Like for me, one of the things that I dealt with was I'm so used to being in the house with somebody. And yeah, I do still have my son, but once he goes to bed, it's just me alone in the bed. I'm so used to sleeping in the bed with somebody, having somebody next to me, having somebody kill my spiders, having somebody to take my car to the shop. I'm used to life in a certain way and to have that covering removed and now I'm by myself that was a lot and I can go through the day and as long as I'm busy 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 I can ignore what's going on but once it's bedtime and I'm by myself at that time it seemed like the walls would close in because the enemy would use those moments of being alone and also feeling lonely to sow seeds of doubt in my life like I didn't want to be here or that I'll never love again or that life will never get better or that I'm a failure. In those moments where I felt like I was alone, that's when he would lie to me the most and get all up in my head. And then next thing you know, I'm crying even more and life feels that much more miserable because I felt alone or it was even moments where even in that when my friends said they would be of support to me during those dark moments I didn't want to feel like I was burdening them everybody going through something and I don't want to dump my stuff on them so I kept a lot to myself but I'm so grateful that God placed people in my life that in the spirit will pick me up and would either call or pray for me just right at the right time and it never fails it would always happen right on time so i want to tell you if you are somebody that is going through a season where you are feeling alone like i said before number one as long as god is on the throne he will never leave or forsake you he gave you that promise you are not out here by yourself and number two i don't care what the enemy tells you you are not a burden to anybody. You do not have to suffer in secret. You do not have to suffer in silence. There are people that love you and will cherish you and will support you if you allow them to. That is something that I dealt with. So many people wanted to be of support to me, but I chose to isolate myself for whatever reason, but it's mainly because the enemy told me I was a burden. You are not a burden to anybody. And if somebody is offering to be of support to you, let them. Now, of course, you got to use wisdom and make sure it's a safe space. But at the end of the day, allow people to love you. And yes, at the end of the day, you can do amazing, wonderful things in this world. But anybody will tell you with the right connections and the right people around you, life can be even that much more better. That happens in business. That happens in relationships. No matter what. You're great by yourself, but you're amazing. When you are linked up with the right people and when it comes to the spirit, you are going to get so much further in life and have so much more victory if you have people around you that you allow to love and support and to pray for you. So if you are somebody that has been feeling alone or you're looking for your tribe of people to get you to your next season because sometimes the people that got you through season A, they're not ready or the right people to get you to season B and you kind of feeling lost in the sauce while you in between like you're leaving your old life becoming a new person and while you're in the middle it's just like life is just top it's just all over the place if you are somebody that's dealing with that right now or if you're somebody who the enemy has planted seeds in you and made you feel like life is not worth living or made you feel like you're a burden or made you feel like you need to suffer in silence or you're keeping your mouth closed to protect somebody else or you're dealing with things that you're too ashamed to talk about, let's pray together so that we can all be free. And if y'all ain't picked up on nothing else by now, if I don't do nothing, I'm gonna pray child. So let's go to God together. Father, in your name, thank you so much for being amazing, for being our Father, 
for removing all condemnation. That you give us freedom, you give us peace, you give us joy unspeakable and full of glory, God. And peace that surpasses all understanding. We thank you for your wisdom, for your mighty hand. We thank you for victory. We thank you that you made us overcomers. And as we're gathered here together today, if there's anyone who is feeling lonely or alone in this world and isolated, I ask that you remind them that you said you'd never leave or forsake them. That even if they made the bed in hell, you would be right there with them. God, if there's anyone that is feeling overwhelmed, I ask that you be the lifter of that bowed down head. And that you remove the heavy burden from them. I ask that God, if there's anyone that is looking for support, that they are feeling alone and they want their tribe. I ask that you give them wisdom to how, on how to meet those correct people for them. That you remind them that there's people currently in their life that love them and that you surround them for people in this season that can help them become who they are supposed to be in you. I ask that just like you had Moses have people lift up his arm, that you give people support around them right now that they need in this season of their life so that they can be more like you and that they can too have victory. And if there's anyone right now who is feeling so low, who is feeling so overwhelmed, and who the enemy has convinced or has tried to sow seeds into them that life is not worth living. First of all, I rebuke that in the mighty name of Jesus. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. I decree and declare with long life you shall satisfy them. And as they are here on this earth, God, I ask that you rebuke the devourer for your name's sake, that you give them strength and that you place people around them that will be helpers unto them as we are supposed to be helpers one to another. God, I ask that you provide resources that provide comfort and peace as they transition into the next season of their life. God, there is someone who is sick that needs you. Please be their healer. There is someone that is depressed that needs you. Please be the way maker. God, please be the healer. Please be the lifter of the bow down head. Please be the healer of a broken heart. God, for everyone that needs you, I thank you that you're strong enough, that you're mighty enough, and that you're loving enough to be everything that they need in this hour. So God, in all of your sovereignty, be the need meet the need of everyone that needs you right now God and I ask you in Jesus name that you provide peace and that you allow people to supernaturally feel your love to everyone that has been struggling to sleep at night let this be the night that they have the best sleep of their life Lord God and I ask you even now as people are transitioning and they are going through season of discomfort that you provide strength because your strength is made perfect in our weakness so for the weakness God we submit it unto you for the loneliness we submit it unto you for the bow down head we submit it unto you for the heartbreak we submit it unto you for every place of struggle and addiction we submit it unto you for the abuse lord god we submit it unto you and then we ask you to make a way lord god provide support and provide a way of escape lord we thank you for being who you are we submit our lives unto you and we ask that you continue to have your way provide community and provide love and just as you did it for me and you don't have a favorite person i ask that you do it for them we love you we honor you we praise you and it's in jesus name that we pray amen for those that are struggling right now, I'll leave some resources in the description box that are ready and available to you. And to everyone that watches this, know that I love you, that God loves you. And most importantly, no matter what the enemy says, you are not alone. Y'all know I play too much. I was going to start singing Michael Jackson, but that's not appropriate for this moment. But y'all know I'm still me. I just, you know, walk a little closer to the Lord. But just know you are not alone. Love you.